Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is on the request of a student and based on article 12.4 of our book and it is on band pass responses. Now, uh, before we proceed, uh, let's clarify the concept of S domain and G omega. Uh, this is uh, the S domain represented here. This is the real axis and this is imaginary axis. And S domain is given by S is equal to alpha plus J omega. So this is the real axis, horizontal axis uh, is alpha and the imaginary axis is J omega. And this can also be thought of as e raised to the power delta uh, alpha t multiplied by e raised to the power j omega t. So what it really means is from this you can see e raised to the power alpha t and depending on uh, whether alpha is uh, positive or negative, this axis is representing a exponential decay or a exponential uh, increase. And this axis, the vertical axis, is actually the sinusoidal axis. E j omega t represents sine or cosine. So this is the oscillating part. Now, we'll see further that whenever we want to find the frequency response of various frequencies, then instead of S domain, we have to uh, move into the imaginary axis only. That means we put alpha is equal to zero. Uh, so we can say that we replace S by J omega. When alpha is zero, then S can be replaced by J omega. So this concept you have to uh, keep in mind. The symbol S stands for the complex frequency variable. And the gain and phase functions are frequency dependent and they reveal uh, the circuit response to the input sinusoids of different frequencies. So we are here on of different frequencies, responses of signals, so gain and phase. To find out gain and phase, we have to move into G omega axis. So to describe the frequency response of a transfer function, we replace S by G omega. Okay, now I'm sure uh, by now you know that the low pass filter, we have this is the pass band where the signal is not attenuated and then gradually the signal is attenuated. Uh, so this is called the stop band. And similarly in case of a high pass filter, the initially it is attenuated and then uh, at the end or the finally it is not attenuated. So this is stop band and this is a pass band. Now if we add the two filters, uh, first we bring the high pass filter here and then we bring the low pass filter. Then you can see from this drive, uh, with the diagram that this initial portion is attenuated and final portion is also attenuated and a middle band is allowed to pass and that is why this is called band pass filter and if we do it other way that is we first we bring the low pass filter here and then the high pass filter low pass filter here and the high pass filter here then you can see that it allows the uh, part of the low signal it is also allowing part of the high signal to pass but it is attenuating in between so this is called band stop filter or notch filter uh, because of the shape. Okay, now with this concept, let's move ahead. So, as we saw that a band pass filter can be a combination of a high pass and low pass. So, this is the transfer function, transfer function of a high pass and transfer function of a low pass and it is written in this form. This is the uh, high pass part and this is the low pass uh, part. 
and as we already discussed that we replace because to find out the frequency response we replace s by j omega so we replace uh, here all the s's by j omega and the gain response is actually the magnitude of this um, uh, a transfer function so the mag we take magnitude magnitude came out omega and the magnitude of this is under is uh, under roots uh, omega square plus alpha square similarly here so this becomes the uh, mod and this is the gain value or the total gain and from here you can see that at omega is equal to zero that means uh, if this is the axis this area we are talking about omega is equal to zero putting omega is equal to zero and this this becomes zero this becomes zero so the whole thing becomes zero and it multiplied by zero becomes zero so at omega is equal to zero the gain becomes zero so we are here gain is zero also at omega is equal to infinity very high on this side what will happen uh, you can see that this omega at the bottom will make everything zero and so everything is zero here so in this case uh, at omega is equal to infinity also we are getting a zero so both hands we are getting the magnitude to be zero and therefore this pattern suggests a bandpass filter because both hands we have zero and zero and we have some gain here so this is a bandpass response okay now we saw that this was the uh, equation for the uh, magnitudes the overall gain of equation is a band pass so overall uh, as we already saw it is a band pass when the high pass cutoff frequency is alpha so this is uh, the alpha frequency cutoff frequency you can see this was the uh, high pass filter so cutoff frequency is somewhere here so this is the cutoff frequency and this cutoff frequency is much lower than the low pass cutoff uh, uh, alpha 2 so this is for the low pass this is the cutoff frequency for the low pass alpha 2 so omega 1 has to be very very smaller than uh, sorry alpha 1 has to be very very smaller than alpha 2 Now, to get a better understanding of plotting, we develop the gain asymptotes for equation uh, 1220. So, this is equation 2 uh, in so three frequency ranges. We will find the asymptotes in three frequency ranges. And if you don't uh, remember what is asymptote, let's see the definition. Asymptote is a line that closely approaches a given curve so if this is the curve this curve can be represented by two straight lines and these two straight lines are called asymptotes so in the in the designing or in the board plot we take help of the asymptotes and then we plot or approximate the curve so what we'll do that uh, we'll uh, try to have an understanding of the asymptotes at three frequency ranges and what are those three frequency ranges first is the low frequency range so when omega is less than alpha and also less than uh, uh, um, alpha 2 so it's, it's very very uh, less than both of them that means it is on the extreme left corner so that is the low frequency range now look in this equation and when omega is very small that means here we can neglect omega omega is very small as compared to alpha 1 and therefore omega is neglected so the bottom will get alpha 1 the numerator remains same uh, and what about the second case now in the second case again 
this omega is very very smaller than uh, a, a2 so therefore this is also neglected and at the denominator we get alpha 2 so at very low frequency uh, the uh, magnitude will become equal to multiply of the two k1 k2 multiplied by omega divided by a1 a2 and if you look at this this is this looks like something this is all constant multiplied by a variable so we know the line equation y is equal to mx or y is equal to 10 t so it looks like that so that means it is a straight line increasing with t or increasing with omega so we can say that the line uh, is something like this it is increasing with omega so this one is for the low frequency this this thing is same as here so we can mark it that this line uh, or this uh, slope is for the low frequency now let's go to the high frequency now at high frequency and on the extreme right end omega is much greater than alpha 1 and also it is much greater than alpha 2 so again I uh, will we'll look at this 12 12 and uh, let's see when omega is much greater than alpha then we can neglect alpha 1 and we can just keep omega square and uh, under root so it, this will become omega and omega omega cancels so it will be k and the first one this cancel so it will just become k1 so in the first half first of all it is uh, when we are neglecting this the bottom will become omega and top or the numerator remains same similarly uh, and the, in the second part again omega is greater than this so a2 is neglected so it is omega at the denominator so it will be k2 divided by omega so k2 divided by omega and solving this or simplifying this these two cancel so it will be k1 k2 divided by omega now this again if we compare it looks like uh, line equation y is equal to 10 over t or it is inverse so the, the the slope will be in the opposite direction so the slope is like this now in, in this case and so this is for the high frequency range when uh, omega is much greater than this so th this is the other extreme we got okay so we 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 have this area and we have this area and let's see uh, what happens uh, now we 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 um, we are now in the middle so if omega is in between the two so as we uh, saw in the previous slide the middle portion was not defined so we are now here that omega is between alpha 1 and alpha 2 so we are in the middle and so let's see now look here omega is greater than alpha 1 so omega is greater than alpha 1 there, therefore alpha 1 can be neglected and so it will become k1 omega divided by omega so this is k1 omega divided by omega in this case omega is less than alpha 2 omega is less than alpha 2 so omega is neglected and so this will become k2 divided by alpha 2 and so this is the mid range and as you can see that there is no variable omega so this is all constant so this will represent a straight line so this is representing the middle part so this is a straight line and now uh, combining the three now we have the uh, uh, lower frequency n because of the high pass 
and we have higher frequency uh, end because of the low pass and we also have the constant portion uh, uh, that is the mid frequency range and so putting in the these these values that we calculated so this is the uh, final look of um, the asymptotic diagram so this figure figure 1218 so the plot of the low, mid and high frequency gain asymptotes. Now, the low frequency and mid frequency asymptotes intersect at this point. So this is the uh, one asymptote and this is uh, the second asymptote and there intersecting at this point and this is the point where this is equaling this thing so k1 k2 omega divided by a1 a2 k1 k2 omega divided by a1 a2 is equaling k1 k2 a2 k1 k2 a2 so this is uh, the point of intersection of the two asymptotes and similarly uh, this and this occurs at frequency omega is equal to alpha 1. So this is the cutoff frequency. Alpha 1 is the cutoff frequency for the high pass filter. Now we, we go into the other end. Here also now uh, this is the point where this and the high, uh, uh, high frequency component they are equal. So we can see that these two are equal at this point and uh, this occurs at omega is equal to alpha 2 which is the cutoff frequency for the uh, um, low pass filter. So this is the cutoff frequency for the low pass filter here. So alpha 2 is the cutoff frequency. And the straight plot is the gain. Uh, when uh, between omega c is equal to alpha 1 and omega c is equal to alpha 2. So this is between the two is the pass band. The mid frequency gain is the pass band. Also there are two stop bands, one below WC1 and other above WC1. So these are the two stop bands. So the input signal to the uh, bad pass cascade must pass through both a high pass filter and a low pass filter. So this is the high pass filter so we can say that we have a high pass filter and then it will pass through a low pass filter so second low pass filter. So the combination of the two is making the bad pass filter so your input signal will pass through this and then it will uh, uh, be the output signal. Okay, now let's do one example. Uh, this has been solved in the book, but I'll just try to uh, clarify a little more. The des to design a band pass circuit with the band pass gain of 10, 10. So this is the band pass gain. So this is 10 and a cutoff frequency of 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz. So this is the 20 hertz frequency and this is a 20 kilohertz frequency. Okay, so omega C1, the, the lower frequency uh, is 2 pi into F and F is 20 uh, hertz. So this will become 4 pi radians per second. Similarly, omega C2, this, this one here, A2, is 2 pi into 20 kilo and it will be 4 pi into 10 raised to the power 4 uh, radians per second. And the middle one, 10, is like fr from here you can see that we can equate 10 as equal to K1, K2 over A2 and this is equal to 10. 
Okay, now we, we saw that we, we are making this by uh, combining two filters, a high pass filter and low pass filters and these are the values of the transfer functions of the two. So the overall transfer function for this one, this filter, we can write it as K1S S plus A1 and K2 uh, divided by S plus A2 just from here from equation 12 11. Now uh, a little bit uh, manipulation uh, we are doing that we take K out bring it here we take K2 also out bring it here and so at the first place it will remain S divided by S plus alpha so this is S divided by S plus alpha and because we have added an A2 here, so we uh, multiply by an A2 and the denominator remains same as plus A2. So these are now in three parts. Uh, this is the lower portion, that is the high pass filter. This is the mid constant gain and this is the uh, right hand side, that is the low pass filter. And now if we replace uh, by uh, the value of alpha uh, 1 and alpha 2 from here, that is omega c1 and omega c2, these values, so our uh, uh, gain function will become something like this. Okay, so we were up to here. And now let's see the transfer function that is this one can be realized using three stage cascade circuits so we can one of the possibilities is that we use uh, uh, the circuit like this so rc for high pass and lr for low pass you can also use rl uh, uh, sorry um, llc for low pass but we are using lr here and for gain, we are using a non-inverting amplifier. So the first stage is the RC high pass circuit. The third stage is the RL low pass circuit. The non-inverting op-amp circuit, this one, is the second stage and it serves two purposes. One, it supplies the mid-band gain, 10 we wanted, so this can provide, because as we have learned that uh, normal RC or RL circuit cannot provide gain, so we have to put a circuit for gain, so it is supplying the mid-band gain. And uh, another very important part it is doing, that it is isolating the two stages. So this is isolating the, this stage from this stage, so there will be no overloading, uh, overloading uh, between the two circuits. And when the second stage does not load the first, the overall transfer function can be found by chain rule or the multiplication rule. We can multiply. Okay. Now the first one, the high pass filter. Uh, we had seen that its transfer function can be uh, written as RCS divided by RCS plus 1. Now this is given uh, in the book for uh, a high pass filter. Similarly, for the low pass filter, the transfer function in terms of resistance and capacitance can be written as R over L divided by S plus R over L. And the mid circuit has the formula of gain 1 plus R2 over R1. So with these component values or component names, we can now design the circuit. So the high pass can now in terms of a resistance capacitance can be written as this. The mid gain can be written as this from here. And the third part low pass filter can be written like this. Now we have to find the values of 
R and C and L etc. And here is uh, one way to find out. We saw that for high pass filter, RC multiply by C, this term actually, this term is equal to 40 pi. 1 over RC by C is equal to 40 pi. Therefore, we can see that RCC is equal to 1 over 40 pi. And if we assume the value of RC, you know that in designing, we assume one term and we find the other term. So here we are assuming the resistance value to be 100 kilo. So from here you can now calculate the value of capacitor to be 0 0.0796 microfarad. So this is the design of the first part or the high pass filter. Then for the gain circuit, we know that this is equal to 10. Again here, we assume the value of R1 to be 10 kilo. And therefore, from here, we can calculate R2 to be 90 kilo. And in the third case, L over RL or RL over L is equal to 4 pi into T. So L over RL is 1 over uh, 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 4 pi. Uh, into 10 raised to the power 4 or 40,000. And uh, here also we assume RL to be 200 kilo and then we calculate L uh, to be 1.592 Henry. Well, I hope this gives you an idea as to how to solve this type of a problem. Uh, it is slightly difficult, but if you concentrate, it will become easier. Thank you.